All right, so the patrons have decided that they want to see this next. This is a Lutetium. Dope Yag, uh, also known as Luag. Um, it's been kind of going around the internet here, and I got this giant chunk from the good folks at Turtles Horde. I am wildly excited to get into this piece because this stuff is really heavy, so it's going to make a super cool die. This is a big, big piece of it. I have a new special cut we're going to do on it. And this stuff is super fluorescent because it's a scintillating crystal. So it has a lot going for it. Um, this will probably be one of the cooler dies I ever cut. So stay tuned. This is probably going to be really fun. This is gonna be one that's hard, gonna be hard to sell. This you think it's gonna be hard to sell because it'll be expensive? No, just because I'm not gonna sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Scintillating crystals are used to detect high energy radiation for areas like astronomy or medical imaging. They do this by absorbing high energy radiation and re-emitting it as visible light. Okay, so I have this kind of all set up here. I cut everything in with 100. I didn't cut it very deep. You'll see like here, some of the facets didn't even come in because I'm not deep enough into this stone yet. Um, the goal here wasn't to final cut it. I just kind of wanted to do a quick practice and make sure that everything was gonna come together the way I was expecting. So it's looking good. I'll probably move to 240 grit now. Um, with these kind of stones that are really big, I'm gonna try and baby it really hard so that I don't cause cracks. This is all the way through 240 grit. Next will be 600 and we'll move on from there, but this is probably like 90% of the first, or maybe 99% of the material that needs to be removed. Not even sure the camera knows what to do. You can't even resolve any of the facets, which is really cool. Okay, we have this thing entirely cut into 600 grit. It's looking fantastic. Um, I'm pleased with the overall size that we've got going on. Uh, Kai came over, he just came over, we were kind of calling it audible on terms of frosting some of these edges. So. When we get to that, I'll talk about it, um, but right now it's time to move on to polishing. So I'm going to do 3000 on Zinc Plus, and this stage will take a pretty long time. It, it This is one of the most time-consuming steps, but you have to do a really good job on the 3000 before you move on, or else it just takes, for, it takes even longer if you move on without getting it right. So here we go. This die is going to be pretty big. Right now it's shaping up to be about 30 millimeters face to face. My normal work is about 22. This means that this is going to be about two and a half times more massive than my normal dice. And add to that that this material has a density of about 6.5 grams per cubic centimeter. That makes it feel more like metal than stone. It's going to be a dice tray breaker. We got the 3000 in there, it looks awesome because you can start to see through the stone and you can start to see dispersion where it's kind of like bending the light into rainbows and the rainbows are kind of green tinted and it just looks incredible.
can't help but be captivated by this thing. It absolutely fits what my imagination sees when I encounter wondrous things in Dungeons & Dragons. The fluorescence is magical because it appears like it's emitting more light than what's possible. I have this thing all polished up and it looks incredible. And the idea is that we, <laughs> we were planning on frosting around the triangles, but it looks so good, I'm scared to do it. Part of the thing is for frosting, so these facets come together at kind of like, they're not like this, they're like that. And so if I mess up a little bit, it's gonna make a really wide frosting really fast. And I'm just nervous. But it's just like all of this stuff, you just have to forge on and just do it. Okay, 3439, here we go. Despite my hesitancy to add frosted edges, I'm glad I did. They add an extra dimension that will be highlighting each number. But now, it's time to flip this stone over and get to work on the other side. I'm generally struggling to start the second side of this die because it's very perfect right now and the second side's always harder than the first and I'm struggling to get started. The second side is more difficult to cut because when you flip the stone over, everything is just slightly misaligned. I think it's like a twentieth of a millimeter or the width of a human hair, but it's enough to notice. You can't just trust the math and the machine to line everything up. You have to make small adjustments to make sure every facet aligns. It's really sparkly because the facets on it are so big. Like normally the star facets are kind of smaller so they create extra bits of light, but they're small bits of light. Whereas this is like big bits of light because it's just bevels everywhere. This is the best dye Doug has ever made. I think it might be. <laughs>
Weeks of relentless effort, nights spent meticulously carving away at the stone, every detail demanding precision. Each moment is a battle between perfection and error. When every ounce of your experience converges on a single creation, the pressure is immense, but the reward is unparalleled.